Hi, my name is Chris Phillips and I'm the president of Greening Homes. Greening Homes' mandate is to minimize the environmental impact of all of our projects as much as possible and our strength is in our crew. Come meet us. My name's Ben Lear. I'm the construction manager at Greening Homes on this particular project. Hi, my name's Nate Jones. I'm the senior crew member with Greening Homes. I'm Ian Gardner. I've been with Greening Homes for about a year and a half now. Um, my background is in cabinetry and furniture and uh, renovations. Hi, my name's Steven. I'm in charge of construction waste management uh, here at Greening Homes. One of the major waste streams on construction sites or most visible ones are the takeout coffee mugs. So Greening Homes always makes sure that uh, we use uh, reusable mugs for our coffee or tea. Another thing we, we like to do is encourage uh, our staff to use sustainable transportation methods to get to work. How do you get to work, Nate? I biked. I bike every day. Hi, my name is Jeanette Merrick. I'm one of the senior crew members at Greening Homes. Sometimes I run to work and sometimes I bike to work and that's my contribution to reducing greenhouse gases. Hi, I'm Shane McKinnis and I'm part of the senior crew here at Greening Homes. My name is Ryan Bolger. I'm a carpenter with Greening Homes. I have a background in sustainable and natural building. I'm Tom. I'm a recent graduate of the Sustainable Building Design and Construction Program. Before we start any project, we like to come into the house and do an inventory of all the prospective waste streams that we think are going to be produced. For drywall, we send it to recycling. Uh, any wood that comes out of the house, we can uh, send to be recycled. Uh, architectural salvage, such as windows, doors, trim. We like to take anything that's usable and donate it to an organization such as Habitat for Humanity. In our lunchroom, we have separate containers for recycling, waste, and compost. To help separate uh, waste on site, uh, we like to sort it as it's being produced. So for example, at every cutting station, we'll have a bin for wood and a bin for garbage. During the pre-design phase, I'll be working closely with the architects, engineers, trades, and designers to make sure all of our green practices will be carried through into the actual construction process. For maximum efficiency, we've decided to insulate all of our water pipes, and we've also aluminum foil sealed all of our venting. Some of the features of the mechanical system on this project uh, that make it more sustainable the high efficiency furnace and a heat recovery ventilator. The heat recovery ventilator exhausts air from the washrooms and kitchen and laundry areas and supplies fresh air to living spaces such as bedrooms and living rooms. What makes this uh, feature energy efficient is that there's a heat exchange between the outgoing stale airstream and the incoming fresh airstream. So we're able to recover between 16 and 80% of the heat that would otherwise be lost uh, if we had straight exhaust fans to the exterior. So this is uh, the uh, basement of one of our current projects and it was, uh, when we got here, a um, hundred year old unfinished basement. Um, what we've uh, done is to bring this up into a modern space. So that means insulating under the slab and uh, running a continuous vapor barrier underneath the slab and up against the walls. So this is a uh, cut out in the floor. You have the 10 mil vapor barrier, which is the yellow part, the uh, rigid insulation on top of that, and then the concrete floorboard on top of that. Something else significant about the slab is that 30 to 40 percent of it has been replaced with slag, which is uh, the byproduct of steel production. Portland cement is responsible for massive amounts of greenhouse gas emissions, so by replacing Portland cement with slag, we're actually helping to reduce those emissions. As you can see, this looks like a, a normal concrete slab, but with the addition of the slag, the concrete is actually less expensive, more durable, and easier to work with. I'm going to talk about the subfloor system that we've installed in the basement. This is a product called Tyrock. The top layer is magnesium oxide, which is a natural occurring mineral, and it's resistant to mold and mildew. And the back side is a rubber plastic combination made out of uh, recycled car tires and recycled plastic. The adhesive that we use to glue the subfloor together, as with all of the other uh, wet applied products on site, have little to no VOCs, uh, also known as volatile organic compounds, which contribute largely to indoor air quality. We've also used 2 by 3s to maximize the cavity offset from the masonry for insulation purposes. We have uh, three power pipes installed in this uh, particular project. Power pipe is a very efficient drain water heat recovery unit. But these power pipes are going to save the uh, client 8% of their total energy bill and about 35% of the total hot water energy uh, heating costs. One of our goals is to reduce material waste. Here on this wall, we use 24 inch on center studs as opposed to 16 inch on center.
we were talking today about the floor we've used, the subfloor. We did a, an, a urea formaldehyde free subfloor in this house, which is um, has no off gases and is generally a sustainable product and results in a very solid floor. So I've used uh, two different types of insulation in this room. Uh, in the ceiling, we've used Ultra Touch Blue Gene insulation, which is recycled cotton denim. And in the walls, we've spray foam to coat. The challenge here was to work with a hundred year old staircase, and uh, we had a lot of structural. Uh, elements that we had to work with and it looks fantastic. We've actually got uh, some of the, the very old hundred year old staircase completely uh, going right into some of the new elements. This is uh, completely reconstructed from the original 100 uh, year old uh, post. This is a Schluter membrane. It is completely waterproof. It keeps water from penetrating into the framing behind the shower. So one thing people don't realize is that uh, in Canada uh, plumbing valves can actually have up to 7% lead. All of the drywall in our projects is 99% or more recycled content and uh, all of the priming in this room uh, it uses a zero VOC primer. This is a staircase that we've been working on. It's uh, originally was coated with a very thick coating of uh, lead paint which was traditionally used earlier in the century. Um, instead of using a heat gun or uh, mechanical removal methods which create a lot of vapor or dust in the air which is quite toxic, we use something called a, a soy gel which is a, a soy based paint remover. Um, very low VOC, very thick consistency. It provided a, a much better um, ability to remove all of the paint without any off gassing or toxic dust and uh, with some light sanding and a little bit of prep it's pretty well ready to finish. All of our lumber we use on site is sustainably harvested FSC certified lumber. For some of the roofing in this project, we've been able to use cedar shakes, which is a completely natural product and completely recyclable. On a greening homes project, we prefer to avoid the use of vinyl at all costs. Um, in this case, uh, we were able to use wood windows, and you can see the framing uh, that we've put off the wall. So we've spray foamed, and then we've got the framing, so we have no thermal bridging, and then the drywall on top of that. One of the uh, major challenges of uh, doing a demolition of an old home, uh, such as this one, is uh, we have a lot of uh, lead paint and potentially asbestos to deal with. So one of the uh, things that we do at Greening Homes is to uh, make sure that our demolition occurs with uh, the use of HEPA air scrubbers and um, HEPA filters. 